Great. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for joining our Toastmaster workshop, Creativity and Innovation in a Workplace. And uh, I'm very pleased to present to you our host today and the speaker of today, uh, Lucy Rogers. And let me share some uh, details on Lucy and uh, couple of points from her biography. Uh, Lucy is an inventor with a sense of fun. She is a Royal Academy of Engineers visiting professor of engineering, creativity and communication at Brunel University, as well as a fellow of the Institution of Mechanical Engineers. And she is adept at bringing ideas to life from robot dinosaurs to mini mannequins and even a fartometer for IBM. She has developed her creativity and communication skills and shares her tricks and tools with others. And she is a presenter of a couple of STEM podcasts and before shutdown was sought after as an awards host and EMC of events and also as an inventor on TV and radio. And today I believe Lucy is in her magic studio with us. And Lucy, I would like to pass it on to you uh, to start this workshop. So please go ahead. Thank you very much and welcome everybody. Today we're going to have an interactive workshop, so do feel free to push questions into the chat and I will be asking you to do some things, so have that pen and paper nearby. You don't have to share everything that I ask you to do. I don't know if you're like me and you don't feel naturally creative. I'm going to share with you today seven tricks and tips that have helped me become more creative, that have helped both in my work and in my Toastmasters, in my presentation skills. First, let me share a little about myself. I'm a mechanical engineer by training, and nowadays I make things in my lab uh, that are mainly fun and a bit flippant. Recently, I took one of those personality tests that you can find online. You know, one of those ones that says, are you more likely to have a messy sock drawer or a tin of pineapples in your cupboard? I should have known then. But it basically came out and said, Lucy, you're not very creative. I'm not very creative. I'm renowned for my creativity. I've made gold boots. Whoops. That's if I can get them right. They light up when you tweet them and they can change colour. I've made, I've worked with robot dinosaurs at a theme park. So you can either tweet them, oh, my batteries have run out, <laughs> um, make him nod. And as mentioned before, I've made a electronic canary. Yeah, it's a matchbox with a ping pong ball and a little bit of electronics inside and connect that up into the cloud and I can have a little warning if there's bad air around. So I've made these fun creative things and people come and, and ask me to do stuff like that but I'm not naturally creative. Well actually that's it. I'm not naturally creative. I have a more tendon I have a tendency to be more logical I like following rules. I'm an engineer and I like the maths and the physics that go with it, the rules and the regulations. But I have, and therefore I have a tendency to follow the rules. I also have a tendency to eat too much chocolate. And we don't always have to do what we have the tendency to do. So just because I might prefer to be logical, I can actually train that creativity. It's not binary. It's not you are creative or you're not creative. And I think schools maybe don't help us uh, with the definition of what creativity is. For me, it was storytelling, art, maybe a bit of you know, clay modeling, but those were the creative subjects. 
And now we're talking about um, advertising and the media and filmmaking as the creative subjects. But I actually am redefining creativity. Creativity to me is the ability to imagine new things and act on those thoughts. I'll say that again. Creativity is the ability to imagine new things and act on those thoughts. So as I say, it's not binary. It's a skill like many others. And as a skill, it can be taught, it can be trained, and it can be improved, which is jolly good for me. So here are my top seven tricks that I have learned. Feel free to take any that you wish. If it works for you, take it. If it doesn't work for you, ignore it. Do what is best for you. The first one, permission is granted. Now, how many times have we had to give ourselves permission to go on social media? Never? How many times have you given yourself permission to watch a film? Nah, not often. But I personally don't think, oh, I'll just go and draw that painting. I think, oh, no, I shouldn't do that. I can't do that. I'm not going to be as good as Picasso. I'm not going to be that good. Oh, it's going to be rubbish. Oh, I'm not going to bother. But who cares what it looks like? If I just want to try something, I can do it. And I don't have to give myself permission to do it. I can yeah, just do it. You don't have to ask. You don't have to be told it's time to do that. Just do it. A lot of these things are requiring practice. My cartoon sketches are not very good, but every so often and I have another go at them and I'll get a little bit better. And now I can tell that my birds sometimes look like my birds, my dogs look like my dogs. Um, and, and it's all just practice. And so give yourself that permission. You know, take, take away those barriers. Stop stopping yourself. Permission is granted. My second point is play, have fun and fiddle with things. So have a look around in your vicinity, uh, pick something up, um, preferably not the cat or the baby. Um, so I'll, I'll pick up the boot. So I just want you to pick it up. Show it to the camera if your camera's on. Make sure you've got something. Okay, you've got something. Okay, now with that thing, use it as if you know, something it's not designed for. So I, I'm going to make my boot into an aeroplane. Loop the loop. If you've got a pen, maybe hold it, hold it in your other hand. Look at it. Have a fiddle with it. Have a look at it. Have you, I've never noticed that that said bamboo up the side. If you take these things and just be a bit silly, have a look at them in a different way. Play with them. Can I juggle? No, nope, no, I can't. <laughs> just like, what is it? What happens? What happens when I dangle it and use it as a pendulum? What happens then? Just start looking every day, you know, when you're maybe on hold on the phone or waiting for a Zoom call to start, just pick something up and give it a good play. Play with it, fiddle with it, feel it. What's, what does it feel like? You know, the shiny there, but up here is a bit rough and oh, I've got Velcro. I've got Velcro there, so that's uh, fluffy on one side and rough on the other. Just give it a good, good look. Now we're moving on to one that we probably all already know. Be prolific and limitless. Okay, so this is uh, where you're gonna need your pen and paper. 
I want you to come up with as many ways as possible of toasting a piece of bread. So start writing them down. How could you toast a piece of bread? Yep, this is brainstorming. Okay, don't stop at one. I want, who can give me seven? Yeah, we've got in the pan. Yeah, I'm liking the ideas coming in the chat. Toaster. Five, bonfire. Yep, yeah, nice. Sun in the heat. Good. A lighter. Oven. Magnifying glass and sunshine, I like that one. Yep, the oven, microwave. Have we got any more coming in? Hot engine in a car, like it. Okay, so here, here's my seven, an electric heater, which is what most toasters are already, um, a gas flame, so I think that was probably in the oven, and a wood fire, I think we had that. Magnified sunlight, we had that. Don't think anyone's come up with friction. You know, if you rub your hands together really tight, uh, you get hot hands. And I'm sure, you know, if you could drag your piece of bread along the tarmac uh, <laughs> behind the car, it might get hot enough. Geothermal heat. Why not? Go and find a volcano and see if you can toast it on there. And nuclear fusion. Well, yeah, some are ridiculous, but don't limit yourself. Right, there was ridiculous ones, because from those ridiculous ones, you might actually <laughs> pay for, uh, you might actually get another spark of an idea that leads to something that's not quite as ridiculous. So here's another prolific thing that we can do. And again, you're going to need your pen and paper. Um, I'm going to share my screen and put a whiteboard on. Okay. And then I am going to draw, draw six circles. I have to move the chat. They're all sort of meant to be round. Okay. And I'm not going to give you very long. I'll probably give you uh, about a minute. I want you to make all those circles into something else. So I am going to draw on mine. And the first one I'm going to do, I'm going to make that one into a cat. So what can you make your six circles into? Um, second one I'm going to make into a coin. Uh, third one will be a flower. Oh, join those two together. Some glasses. Um, then what can I have? Oh, I'm going to make that, make that one into. Oh, 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 cartooning's not my best. Dirty sign. Okay, so how have we done? Thumbs up if you've done some. Wonderful. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. About a minute, we did six. Now, uh, let me clear those, clear all the drawings. Can you do another six? Draw another six circles, different things this time. Now it gets a little bit harder. That's your telescope. Uh, 
Coke can. Uh, what else can I make? Pumpkin there. Uh, um, 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 um. <laughs> oh, with apologies to anyone who's ever been pregnant. <laughs> oh, what can I do for my last one? Oh, I'm going to make that into a clock. something like that have you all done thumbs up yep one more time clear all the drawings go again So what this is actually doing, it's clearing your mind of taking away the obvious things and then you're having to think, you know, having to really get into it. You know, what can I make? And you'll probably find that, you know, after the first 12 or so, it does get a little easier because you're tuned in to what you want. That's meant to be a bicycle wheel, not a very bloodshot eye, but there we go. <laughs> um, that was my... Um, oh, so that's actually a loudspeaker. <laughs> um, what can I make that one into? I think this one can be my dog. Or is it another cat? Not actually sure. <laughs> um, oh, I've got two more to do. Um, I say it's going to get easier, but sometimes it doesn't. Oh, let's try join those two. Let's cheat here. And make a bicycle. Um, I think that, oh, I can't quite remember how bicycles go. Something like that. There's a bike. So I'm going to just ask for a little bit of feedback there. How did it go? How did we feel? Good. Easy. That was great. Yeah. yeah. Do you mind if I speak? No, Is please that do. all right? Yeah, please do. I thought that was really tough on the first six, but as we went along, you're right, it became easier. I've got 13 different things it could be, yeah. which is amazing. Isn't it? Because I, th I thought I couldn't do it, you know, at first. So that's fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well done for joining in. Yes, it is. Okay. It's one of those things that's sort of counterintuitive. It's like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm getting into this, getting into this. And you sort of stop self-restricting anyone else got anything to comment just shout oh, I can. found it hard all the way all the way through was hard <laughs> maybe you need to do another six to get that easy bit mm. <laughs> I won't make you let's stop sharing that um, and put my text back over that side okay So this is one of those, again, uh, it's another thing that you can just play with when you're, I'd say, waiting for a bus, but that doesn't seem to happen much at the moment. So when you're waiting for the Zoom call, when you're waiting around, you know, just draw some circles. What can you make them into? What can you make some squares into? What can you make some triangles into? And just sort of get that other part of your brain playing, doodling. It's moving on to number four copy copy and create now i'm not saying plagiarize anything i'm not saying um you know you, you try and fob yourself off as the the next uh, rembrandt or or whatever have a look around who inspires you what sort of things do you like 
I mean, how many of us have ever stared at that blank page and thought, mm, I don't know what to paint, I don't know what to draw, I don't know what to write, you know, all those horrible feelings that I had at school when I was like told to go and be artistic or be creative and it's like no I, I don't know what to do I don't know what to do so one thing that I like to do I like Escher's drawings um, if you've seen them they're the uh, the stairs that look like they're going down and then you look like someone's climbing up them they're sort of they play with perspective and Escher also did a hand drawing a hand and then a whole load of tessellated birds um, so you couldn't tell where one started and the next finished and I love those sort of things so I find some of his and I just have a go at copying them. Now, I'm never going to be the next Escher. Um, I'm never, no one's ever going to confuse my work with Escher's work. So I'm not plagiarizing, but I'm copying it just to give my hand, my brain, something to play with, something to focus on, something to concentrate on and see how can I use my pen and how can I think and what can I do? Now, if you do this with more than one person, so not only do I like Escher, I like Heath Robinson. Heath Robinson was a, I think it was 50s, 40s, 50s. He was an architect who did some wonderful, really silly cartoons, a bit like um, the Wallace and Gromit things, where there was a rope attached to a pulley that was uh, attached to the, the dog, or was attached to something else that just pulled the, the quilt or the blankets off. Um, and a hot bath that was just you know, heated by a candle somewhere along the line. So all these really ridiculous things. I've been copying those as well. And then I can also copy numerous other things, because if you're copying from different sources, um, then you get not oh, that person's like Escher or that person's like Heath Robinson, you get that person is uniquely them. I am uniquely Lucy Rogers because my inspirations have all come from different places. And if you take the more inspirations you take from different places, the, uh, the more unique you will be. Yes, yeah, so, so Sylvia was saying we say something is a bit Heath Robinson. It's uh, based on his cartoons, which were, you know, held together with string and hope, uh, maybe a bit of candle wax as well. So I, I loved all that stuff. So all this is practicing. You're copying, you're copying, and then you create things. I've heard of pop bands that when they were children, they would um, listen to their favorite. Uh, pop group then try and write what would their next one sound like and so they wrote a song in the style that they wanted their band to play um, and eventually they had enough new material that they became their own pop group and so this kind of stuff is just practicing and getting your hand in of being a little bit more creative So then we're going to move on to number five, changing your perspective. How many times have you had to pick something up off the floor and you look under your desk and you think, oh, look at all that dust under there. Or, oh, I didn't know that there was that. The chair leg looked like that. So while, while you're there, get down, have a look. Go on, go, go, move out the camera view and go down and have a look under your desk or under something and just have a look. Uh, how it's all put together. Then once you've, you've had a look around and maybe seen something you hadn't spotted before, go up, go up on your tiptoes. I'm always surprised when very tall people can see the dust on the top of my lintels and my, uh, <laughs> my, my uh, bookshelves and my doors. Everyone must think that uh, all very tall people think that most people have dirty houses because they can see on top of your kitchen cupboards where all the dust is. Now, I'm not really saying about dust, but I'm saying change your perspective. What happens if you close one eye and then make a tiny little hole out of the other um, in your other hand? And you sort of give yourself tunnel vision. What is looking? What what can you see? You can see things a lot clearer. I'm looking at my keyboard and thinking, oh yeah, that, those letters are there. Um, when I've got two eyes, I wouldn't focus so intently on it. So um, I've got another one I'm going to share. 
share my screen with my iPhone. There we go. Hopefully you can see some coins. OK, so a couple of coins. Let's zoom in a bit. Did you know that those lions on the back of a 10p have got hairy arms? Did you know they're sitting on this checkerboard type thing? What about the penny? Oops. Uh, there's the queen's head. Look at her crown. Look at those little spots all the way around the penny. What's on the other side? See the detail. I mean, coins are really good for doing this with because they've got so much detail on them that you really just, yeah, they're a coin in your purse. We probably don't use coins that much nowadays either. But changing your perspective, having a look at things right up close is a really great way of just seeing things slightly differently. So looking at things slightly differently, you probably do this already. Who's had a recipe and they've gone to the cupboard and they've got nine out of the 10 things. You think, oh no, I haven't got any lemons and this, this needs lemons. Oh, what have I got? What have I, oh, I wonder if a lime will do that. Let's try that and see what happens. Or I haven't got any ginger. What, what other spices can I put in? Um, yeah, I'm sure many of you have already done that, of actually substituting something because you've had to, because you didn't have it in. Have you ever also done the make-believe? So you've watched a film or you've read a really, really good book and then you wonder what happens next? What happens to that character next? What, 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 if, they, what if they hadn't done that thing and something else had happened? wonder what happens then or have a think about telling the story from a different character's perspective do you imagine lord of the rings maybe you've in the hobbit if you've read that and gollum the the creature that's after the ring and he's always the bad guy well you imagine that story told from gollum's point of view just changing it up and changing it round can really help your mind when it comes to everyday things that you want to do, things in your work. It helps you just think a little bit out of the box, maybe just differently. Number six, I have got a critical eye. Have you looked at something that nah, don't like that? Have you then taken it a little bit further? I don't like that because. Why don't I like that? So I don't like that bit of music because I don't like the lyrics. They make me feel uncomfortable. Or, oh, I don't like how the strings in that make that noise. I don't like that picture because I don't think that orange goes with that purple. Or why? Why don't you like something? And why do you like something? I really like Escher because particularly the tessellations, because it makes me think. It makes me look at it again and say, oh, how, how did he do that? Oh, that's so clever. I really admire that. I like the way that he's managed to get them into, intertwined within each other. And a, a slight aside, I was uh, kayaking recently and I went past uh, a little island where all these oyster catchers were, they're birds. They've got long red legs and a long red beak, but their wings are black and white. And when they all took off together, it just looked like one of the Escher paintings of all these tessellated birds together. And I probably wouldn't have even thought of that had I not been looking at Escher stuff. I'd have just said, oh, birds, nice, very good. Uh, but you can see if you start doing these sort of things that you can make links. And those links lead to other things. Look around with a critical eye for creativity all around you. Now, in lockdown, we probably saw a whole load more creativity and inventiveness from people around us because we all had to. 
So I went to uh, my vet. I needed some more medicine for the dog. Fortunately, the dog didn't. It was just a repeat prescription. So I phoned up the vets and I paid online. Uh, I paid over the phone with my card and so that was all good. They said, yep, turn up, um, press the little intercom and we'll get the, get the dog drugs to you. So off I go, press the intercom, all hand wash there, everything. They said, oh, yeah, take a step back. Um, and in a moment, uh, just to your right, there's a little table. One of ours will lean out of the window, put the medicines on the table go back in, so they close the window, and so I can go and pick them up, because this, this was before they managed to have enough masks and visors and things. And so they'd actually, you know, they'd, they'd use their imagination, they'd just put a table outside, that saves everyone, you know, it doesn't drop anything on the floor, it's all safe as possible. So that kind of creativity, you can see every day around you when you start looking for it. Finally, fail learn and try. Are you scared of failing because you look silly? You imagine if a toddler did that. Oh, I tried that walking thing and I fell over on my bum, so I'm not going to do it again. Toddlers, <laughs> toddlers don't think like that. Toddlers go, oh, right, I made one step. Let's see if I can make two steps. And you know, this is somewhere we get beaten, it gets beaten out of us that we're allowed to fail. Failure, as long as it's a safe failure, is a good thing. It's how we learn. It's how we improve. We've got to push those boundaries and push those limits. And if we don't know what they are, well, how do we know how far we can go? Now, I know that at schools, you know, failure is very bad. You know, you want to pass those exams. You want to you know, get the, uh, get, win the competition. But learning how to fail is one of those things that I think is wonderful. And you can do it in anywhere and actually transfer those skills. So something I learned uh, last year, I got a slack line. So it's like um, a tightrope walk, but slack. <laughs> so it, it, it wobbles and it's about a couple of inches wide. And I strung that up in my house, uh, in my garden between a couple of trees. Now, the first time I stood on it, my leg went like a sewing machine. It was shaking all over the place and I could stand up for maybe a fraction of a second. And over time, I could stand up for a little bit longer and then I could stand up for a bit longer. And then I was standing on it for a second. And then th then I tried to take a step and, th and then another step. And as the days progress and I probably did 10 minutes a day. And just standing on this slack line, trying to walk. And it's only about a foot off the ground. So it wasn't a, that a dangerous a thing to do. But I learned how to do it. And I did the uh, risk assessment. I made sure that I wasn't going to land in the rose bushes or on the dog. Uh, so I you know, made it as safe as possible, safe to fail. But I tried it and I tried it. And that taking yourself back to a beginner's mentality to try something absolutely new and not be scared of failing, because what does it matter if I can't do walk along a slack line? Uh, it doesn't matter at all. And so I can put myself out there and I can put myself back in that beginner's mindset, learn how to fail, have a think about it, realize and get that self-confidence that, hey, when I practice something, I get better. And that's really great. So I can now practice these other things. So yeah, we've had to learn a lot of things over the last couple of years. I mean, uh, probably many of us hadn't used Zoom before. We've maybe had to teach uh, relatives how to use Zoom. Um, we've, we've done an awful lot of stuff, home, home teaching of children that you know, we wouldn't have chosen to do but we had to learn so I think the last couple of years has actually been really good for our creativity and our abilities to think and actually start new things so I'm going to uh, conclude on this bit and then we can have a bit of a chat um, on my seven tricks so Val actually I gave Val my um, pdf of this presentation so you can actually don't have to write these down but I've got my seven tricks of permission is granted play fun and fiddle be prolific and limitless copy copy and create change your perspective 
have a critical eye and fail, learn and try. So these are the things that I've been taking on board and putting into uh, not just my presentations and my table topics, uh, but also in my actual work as well, taking things from one place and another. So I'll be interested to hear where you think you could maybe use some of these things. Have I got the chat up? Yeah, I've got the chat up there. Or just jump in and start talking with me. Everyone's shy. <laughs> Shall I start? And I'm Please sure do. other people will want to come in. I've gone in the last 18 months or so from classroom training to virtual training, obviously. And I guess it has made us think, all of us who, who do the job I do, about how we can do certain things in Zoom rather than in a classroom with people. And it's been a challenge. Mm -hmm. And um and you really it doesn't feel like a safe place to fail that's the only thing with number seven because if this is training for a client and we come up with some idea and it doesn't work it's not particularly safe but i was just thinking when you were saying that well how you know should we have tried it out on each other first you know could we have done that so get a group of colleagues together and say hey do you think this works will this work or not so yeah but you're right i don't think I'm a creative person at all. I probably am in some ways, but that's because, as you said, I, I can't draw. Yeah. So, you know, at school, can you draw? I, I don't know. I can't draw. Um, but you can be creative, I guess, in other ways. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. we saw my, my drawing abilities on my, <laughs> on my six circles. <laughs> yeah. But yes, you've got that. It's, it's creativity is the ability to imagine new things and mm. act on those thoughts. So it can be, yeah, it can just be thoughts. Uh, it can be ideas, but they actually then act on it, uh, mm -hmm. which is what you've had to do with can this work in a Zoom? Can we train in a Zoom method? Yeah, yeah just rethinking the way we mm. do things. Yeah. So in, in itself, that's creative. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. So I, I assume this group also does table topics at times. Um, and yeah, I found it really useful for that. And I can just go off on a whim, uh, particularly that, can you imagine the character from another point of view? And then for table topics, sometimes you can actually just steal that idea and then go off with it. Um, and maybe they don't realize that you're actually just paraphrasing a film. <laughs> we got any other comments? I think myself uh, being a president of the Moody's London Toastmasters Club, uh, I, cho I got on the roll when we just went into lockdown and uh, I found it uh, really difficult to come up with creative ideas to maintain the membership in the club and make sure that members are enjoying what they're doing because you don't want to do exactly the same sessions every single time. So I always have to think about what's new, what's going on there, what would they enjoy and find a different perspective. And at times I just think, God, I'm running out of all of the ideas. I don't really know what else to come up with. But for some reason, I get inspiration from uh, just uh, from, from members themselves, just the way how they talk, what they share in terms of their stories. And then some of the ideas come and pop into my head. And then I manage to come up with something. But at times, I just think next time when I would like to have something special, I'm thinking, gosh, what should I do? Where to find this source of inspiration? So that, that, that's been quite challenging. Yeah. Well, you're actually very creative. <laughs> <laughs> You really you are. <laughs> in terms of how to do table topics or subjects or themes for the week so i think i think you are very creative yeah thank you but it does come with some challenges for sure that's from from my perspective yeah, yeah. and there's something else i learned in toastmasters is always have that little book with you when you you know you hear a bit of a story or a snippet of a story or a bit of conversation and you can write it down and, yes, and i do the same with inventions that i see um, I, I don't know if anyone has seen the, uh, the hire bikes, the Santander bikes in London at night, and they've now got a green laser that projects a little image of a bicycle out in front. Uh, this was designed by a woman who was doing a, a degree and she realized that um, 
trucks can't see you because you're in the blind spot. And so she invented this little projector that projects a, you know, I'm coming, <laughs> a little green uh, bicycle out on the road in front of you, 10 feet in front of you. And now it's on all of the Santander bikes in London. So it's just one of those things that you pick up and think, oh yeah, that's a, you know, um, I knew about lasers and I knew about the problem. I could have done that if I'd thought about it. Um, and that's what I love about those, those kind of things that you just yeah, haven't, haven't thought about in that way. And someone else does it and you think, yes, how clever. I mean, another one is um, a flushable pregnancy test. Now, I, uh, if you've never used a pregnancy test, they're a bit like the lateral flows um, in, in instead of spitting and then you have to whittle on them. Um, and they're, you know, I don't know, something that sort of size. And then you have to dispose of it. You know, it, it tells you if you're pregnant or not, then you have to dispose of the thing. Um, and so that's an awful lot of waste going into landfill. And you just imagine if you're a teenager and you, you didn't want mum and dad to know that you've just done this test and how do you then get rid of it? And a couple of ladies have just uh, designed one that's flushable, uh, biodegradable and flushable. So you, know, you use it, you flush it, it's gone. All evidence is gone. Again, another one of those, oh yeah, that's a great idea. Simple idea, but great idea. I think there's also recyclable um toothbrush heads you know an electric toothbrush oh yeah mm -hmm. you, you can get recyclable heads instead of throwing away the plastic and yeah so yes i mean people are amazing to come up with these things yes yeah and so that's what i do is keep an eye out so in your industries keep an eye out for who's doing something that's great um you know like we watch the uh the toastmasters international competition speech winners uh, and saying, oh, yeah, what do they do that's good? Uh, actually, have a look around in your industries and see who can I who can I copy from? Copy, copy and create. Sorry, it's me again, but I'm, I'll shut up if other people want to talk. We have a similar saying in training in its case, C-A-S-E, copy and steal everything. Wonderful. <laughs> I but, love it. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, as you say, sort of make it your own as well. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, without the plagiarism bit. <laughs> There's so many ideas out there. We got any more? I see every, every, everyone's just uh, turned off all their videos, turned off all of everything. Are you still there? <laughs> still there. Yeah, Michael is. I think, are you an engineer as well, Michael, of some kind? Uh, or is that a not, software is engineer. That a not, so, uh, a software engineer, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, we architect uh, the solution from sort of from a higher, a higher point of view, I guess. So, uh, not in the nitty gritties yet. And then, still a load of problem solving in there. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, a lot of patterns as well, which uh, are usable. So, same way as architecture, when they reuse patterns, which uh, yeah. for specific tasks, we do the same thing in software. Mm -hmm. So, I there's didn't a lot of. Uh... Any of that, sorry. <laughs> Oh. Uh, yeah, so a lot of stealing. <laughs> yeah, okay. a lot, a lot okay. of copy, oh. copying, and creating. <laughs> yes, I, I understand stealing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shall we tell you our most inventive thing that we did with a circle? Oh, please, show, show if you can, or just tell. I, I, well, I've just got a little sketch, but they're, they're, they're not very good, oh, they're... but so I, I can't, but I can tell you what they are. Please. One of them was an ele was the end of an elephant's trunk, which I assume oh, might nice. be slightly. So there's like an elephant's trunk behind it. <laughs> I also, I also had a clown's nose. Oh, nice. Yes. A plug hole in a bath or sink, but that's not very, that's not very creative. The handle of Well, it a was because, uh, you know, something I hadn't <laughs> thought of. So, oh, yes. right. Um, a shower head, yes, right, a shower head, and uh, the handle of a cup. Yeah. I think they were. I had others, but I think they were my best ones. Oh, a wine glass. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah, one ob all, obviously the best one. Obviously. Yeah. And I've just seen behind you. You've got a globe. That would have been a nice one. <laughs> oh, I thought I'm, of that one. <laughs> so, if anyone else wants to put in the chat, uh, you don't have to come on and actually say what you've uh, made in those or. Yeah, either chat or tell me. Uh, I've made uh, uh, snowman with the three circles. I just thought this is the easiest. <laughs> just put three on top and there is a snowman. 
um, a face, someone's face. Yeah. Uh, very practical. A crab pancake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yes. And crepe, well, you mean a crepe? A crepe, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what else? I had lollipop as well. Nice. Yeah. Uh, that's prob probably the best one. The, the rest I had quite similar to what you had. Sun, clog, uh, can, uh, potato. Yeah, so Cassandra had a potato, a planet and a spider. Oh, spider, wow. lovely. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. How about you, Juliet? I had a peach. A peach? Mm -hmm. Nice. Oh, the world. I don't know if someone has said it that. The world. I can't hear you. Sorry. The, world. the country, the world. The oh, the world. Earth. Yeah, the globe. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Uh, mouse. No, a uh, cat. A uh, cat. Mm hmm. So I think from just actually just what we shared there, you know, we, we all did say 12 of them, but we shared them all around and uh, we might not have 10 lots of, of 12, but we've definitely got more than 12. We haven't all done the same 12. So, you know, a lot of this group work, um, you know, brainstorming stuff. Yeah, I think uh, it got done to death in maybe the 90s and we all laugh at it as a brainstorming and uh, group work doesn't actually come in results. But to actually just get your brain starting to think, maybe it does. Maybe you just change the way we're thinking. I think it's harder sometimes, especially with mathematical subjects or, you know, I'm teaching things like credit analysis, analyzing balance sheets and financial statements. It's hard to be a bit hard to be creative with things like that, I think. Yeah, because it's very sort of factual and numerical and uh, but it but I guess it's trying to think of different ways of doing it, you know, because... and maybe the um, the analogs of this is like you try to imagine it's like, you know, I, um, l let me think of, um, you know, primary school maths is, uh, you know, two plus two equals four. Well, that's two apples plus two apples is, you know, four apples. What can we link it to that's every day? So a lot of what I'm, um, I do in, in my life is explain sub technical subjects and actually put those into plain English. And it's, yeah, but I don't have to, I have to be correct, but it doesn't have to be exact. So one of the things that I learned was uh, I didn't have to, when I was talking about a spacecraft tra traveling to the moon, it was about the size of a washing machine. And it was, the speed was such and such. Well, it was actually the velocity, but uh, for the purposes of the general public um, getting the information, that was good enough at the time. It wasn't a you know, scientific paper I was writing. I'm not quite sure how you do that when you are actually trying to get that scientific <laughs> stuff across. Um, but I, I remember one of my early uh, lecturing roles, I was lecturing electronics and I had somehow decided that um, my normal flippant um, presentation style wouldn't, wouldn't work at a university and I had to be actually factual and factual. And so I gave all these equations and it was dry. I was boring myself. I don't know what these poor students were thinking. And then I realized, actually, you want anecdotes in there. You want to say, oh, yeah. And, and then the, the chap who, who invented, um, yeah, Mr. Ohm inventing Ohm's law, he did such and such. Or, and I have used this in such and such and actually relate it to the everyday. And it breaks up what you're talking about. Um, and yeah, just put, put my own personality in there because lectures without personality are, well, it's like reading a textbook, you know, and my students may have well have, le have read a textbook. Yeah, good point. Yeah, which I think we do. We give our own little anecdotes from our past yeah. experience. This happened, that happened, but uh, yeah, good. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't trying to teach you to suck eggs there. I was <laughs> going, going from my... Oh, I'm, I'm still I, I'm still blushing from even thinking about the uh, poor electronic students that I was uh, teaching. <laughs> well, I think I'm basically done there, Val. Um, hopefully, everyone has got a little bit of this creativity out of uh, something out of today. The seven points. Yeah. 
Yeah, great. Thank you so much, Lucy. I got uh, quite inspired, haven't thought like Sylvia, that uh, I can come up with uh, more ideas in terms of what to do with all of these circles. So it's great <laughs> to have some time for brainstorming and some of the ideas where you can get inspiration from. Definitely lots of takeaways from my side. And uh just uh, would like to ask if uh, anyone has any final questions for Lucy before we conclude the session. If no questions, I think uh, I would like to thank our speaker today, Lucy, thank you very much. It was very inspirational and uh, gave us ideas how to work on our creativity and some innovative ideas, hopefully going forward. And uh, it was a pleasure hosting you today. And uh, if uh, anyone has any comments or questions for Lucy, I will share with you uh, some handouts uh, where you can uh, get uh, Lucy's details and reach out to her directly. But on that note, I would like to wish everyone a nice evening, despite that it's uh, very rainy in London and quite cold. Uh, but I hope you all have a great evening and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys at our other events. And Lucy, thank you very much once again. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, thank, thank you. you, Lucy. I echo that very much. Thank yeah, thank you Absolutely. very much. Thank you very much, I, Lucy. I enjoyed it. Thanks, Lovely. Lucy. Thanks, thank Val, you, Lucy. for arranging. <laughs>